Time. Are you good, Jonathan? Look at that stand. It is my stand. I got it when I was stabbed with an arrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, you had to do something. Uh, thank you. Oh, gosh. He's basically going to trigger basis now. Be interesting. So, welcome to a cosplay on budget or saving money one cosplay at a time because if anyone here has done anything cosplay related, you know that it is expensive and I, the majority of us here are broke college students. Well, I mean, you might not be broke. I can't really, like, assume that. But, um, <laughs> You know, it's always good to save money when you can, and like, it's really easy to save money with cosplay. Like, surprisingly easy. So, we're gonna learn how to do that! Yay! So, first of all, I guess we're gonna start with the thing again, so like, how much money did the outfit you're currently wearing cost you? Some shoes. Including shoes. You can include glasses too, because glasses, and then you get, then it's scary. <laughs> So like my shoes are probably like twelve dollars. I usually wear thrifted clothes, but the only thing I'm wearing right now is thrifted is my jacket. So like probably I'm upwards to like I think I got these shoes, these pants from Black Friday shopping. So probably like is it forty dollars, forty five dollars? Now I'm putting glasses. So I don't want to think about that. Um, so like clothes aren't cheap. Like we they're kind of a necessity of life, kind of, they are more <laughs> a necessity of life, um, and because of that they are, they don't come cheap, and so when you're making clothes, it's also not going to be cheap, you just kind of have to accept that, but there are ways to make it cheaper for yourself, and honestly sometimes buy, making versus buying can be cheaper in the end, so it's up to you to crunch those numbers and decide whether it's cheaper to make or buy. Um, so, when you start making a costume, your first thing, you, I mean, if you're trying to save money, you're going to want to make a budget. Um, there's also, budget includes all the supplies, but it also includes the time it's going to make to make the costume. The time it's going to take to make the costume. Wow, Not we're costume. flying colors today. Um, <laughs> Because, I mean, I don't want to say time is money, but it's kind of true, and there's like a reason that some clothes are really expensive because of the amount of time that it goes into making them, and it, it really is up to you to decide whether or not the amount of time it's going to make the costume is worth, like, whether making it versus buying it. I'm trying, I'm, there's no buying, sh you can buy full costumes if you want, there's no shame in that, but, um, when it comes to budgeting, we're trying to maximize our time and efficiency, and the way to do that is to plan ahead, to know what you're doing, to be plan, um, plan to make compromises, um, and change the plans, and also just go slowly, because one thing you're gonna learn is that there are some really good deals out there that you can get, but you might have to like wait weeks to get them. And so if you have the time for that, then I highly suggest waiting for that 50% coupon to come up in Joanne versus just saying, well, I need it now, because the convention's in two days. We've all been in that position, and then you have to buy a $15 pattern. <laughs> um, so the best way to maximize your cost efficiency is to plan ahead. Um, you're going to want to consider how complex the character design is and everything you're going to need for it. And when I say everything, I mean literally everything. Like, I'm going to need thread. What, like, what can I get? Where can I get it? Um, like. How, what techniques am I going to use? Am I going to use embroidery techniques? If so, do I need to buy embroidery needles? Do I own that stuff already? Um, because sometimes when you're making cosplay, you might not. I have an example in one of my costumes that we'll go over later that I didn't have a certain tool that I needed to make the costume, so I had to buy that tool, which was another $25, and I did into my, my pool of money it took to make it. So you have to take into account how much material you'll need. Your, um, because if you need a lot of material, you're gonna really want to spread that out so you can really maximize the like fifty percent off coupons and like the because you know it's only from one item, so you're gonna wanna. They're also gonna have to the scarcity of that material because you know if they're more scarce, this material is gonna be more expensive. And if you want to use the like really nice fabrics, they're gonna be and not, it's not gonna be cheap. Um, and then also just deciding whether or not it does need to be made from scratch or could you thrift it? Could you buy it already? Um, and then also your attention to detail. Uh, there's always going to be a cosplay where you want to be really detailed, but sometimes it might just come up and you just might be like, it's not worth the time or the money, 
and it's really up to you whether or not you want to sacrifice that detail. It's like we don't have to be perfectionists, even though sometimes we want to be. It, you really need to know when you can <coughs> ignore some details. So, um, again, with planning ahead, you're going to want to look out for deals. Joanne's about has like a 50% coupon off like every month or so, maybe twice a month. They also do a 20 or like 30% off your entire purchase um, about once a month. And you're really going to want to look up for those. Same with like pattern sales, because we never buy a pattern. We can never, never buy a pattern at full price. Always look for the sales in their coupon books. They go on sale like once every two weeks, or and like they do them in waves, so there's almost always a sale going on, but it's usually on the weekends. Um, you're going to want to gather your materials over time and spend small amounts of money at times, which um, might make you feel safe, but it will stack up. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, that's the truth. Like the money's going to stack, stack up even if you do spend it a little bit at a time, but at least you'll be able to get all the coupons you want. You're gonna want to wait for sales, so Cyber Monday is really good. Um, if you can go to go, um, go to Joann's like the day of or the day after Black Friday, they always have so many good deals. Like I go, it's great. Um, and then take care of flash sales or one day deals. So Joann's will. I don't know if this is later, but Joann's has a thing where you can sign up and they will text you. And if you're like the first 100 people to click this link, um, you get like a $500 gift card. But if you don't, you still get a coupon from it that you can use, and there's also Arta flash sales, so Arta wigs will have like one or two days where they sell all their wigs at like 10% off, which isn't a lot, but like Arta wigs are expensive, so you're still saving like three or four dollars every time, and if you, then you just stack up on all the wigs that you know you're going to need for like the next six months, but it's a lot of me. Um, yeah, so you just want to be like, remain vigilant, you must be ready to pounce at any time, um, so, so setting your budget, you're gonna need your budget to be realistic, um, and you so like when you're making, setting out your cosplay and figure out what all you need, you'll be able to somewhat like estimate what you're gonna want. You're gonna have to decide your flexibility too on that budget. So like if you find a fabric that you really like, but it's, it's more expensive than you thought, like are you willing to go for that? Um, you have to remember that all the prices like it's gonna stack. It's gonna. Um, and then you also have to like, keep in mind that some things are just going to be expensive in nature and they're going to be really hard to like find deals on. So this is especially true for wigs. If you're going to, if you really want a good quality wig and you want to buy an Arta wig, like those prices, I said they get 10% off, but like that's not the biggest deal. So like they're always going to be the same price. And Wurgla is going to always be expensive. I don't know if you're, you might, you can buy in bulk, but then you're going to have to buy a lot. It's going to be a lot of money to buy it in bulk. Um, and like there are gonna be certain materials like the I'm call out post the Yaya Han fabrics at Joann's are all, they're very expensive fabrics they're very good fabrics but you're very seldom gonna get a good sale on them like you might get thirty percent off but also I think they're usually like twenty percent off so um, and then also just taking account everything everything thread zippers boning buttons. <coughs> This is another place where you can make compromises. So I don't like to just not buy thread if I have a lot of thread and just find the closest color I own um, until I know I don't have like any color, like I don't have any blue thread anymore. <laughs> it's all gone. Um, so are you okay with maybe having that different thread color show through, everything like that? Are you okay with instead of doing buttons, maybe doing Velcro, which I don't think is super like, more cost effective in the time in the long run. It might be more time effective though, because you don't have any buttonholes. But yeah. So remember, um, cheaper is not always better. And um, I mean, we can see this with wigs when we did the wigs workshop. Like the cheaper the wig, generally the less the worse quality it's going to be. Um, but and budgeting and cutting corners are not the exact same. Like you can still get the good fab, the good fabric, like the, the fabric that is gonna make your cosplay the best it is at a good price as long as you spend the time, wait, know how to play your couponing system because there's it's a whole game. Um, it's like playing the lottery. Um, and then also you decide what your willing, like what's what's the most important part for you for your cosplay. So is it the wig? So I have Rapunzel up here. Um, because 
I do want to do her full blonde wig someday, and so that's probably what I'm going to spend the most of my money on. I'm glad Liz is not here because she'd be yelling at me right now. Why haven't you started yet? <laughs> but um, or do you would you prefer like to have really high end fabric? So if you're going to do like a bodysuit, you might want like a really nice fabric for it. Um, if do you want to splur on Warbla, or do you want to do resin gems? Like, it's what do you want to do the most? Like, what do you, like to decide what you're willing, how far you're willing to go for cosplay. Um, and then also, there's sometimes, the other reason Rapunzel's up here, there's sometimes where it's just budget and the cosplay just aren't gonna work. You're just gonna have to go for it. And these are usually reserved for dream cosplays or cosplays that are really um, more advanced um, and have a lot of details because the only kind of cosplays that you're going to want to put all your effort into and get it right on the first try rather than cutting corners. And so those ones aren't going to be super budget friendly. So here's another one. This was not a budget costume. This is our old President Logan, if you don't know him. And uh, this isn't even his, most, um, his biggest, least budget friendly costume anymore, but it is one of his. and. This is something that he just bought the materials he knew he wanted and he went for it and didn't think about how much it was going to cost him. Obviously, <coughs> don't bankrupt yourself trying to make budget, big non-budget <laughs> costumes. But sometimes if you try and make a budget for a big costume like this, it's just probably isn't going to work out in your favor. Or you're going to look at the budget that you, you estimated and you're going to cry beforehand. You just cry afterwards. Um, <laughs> so, so we're going to start with explaining different ways to cosplay and how to save money. So the first like way to get to make a cosplay and have it be as cheap as you possibly can is to do what we call a closet cosplay, which is basically where you take stuff you already own and you make a cosplay out of it. Um, you can like make alterations, you can sacrifice things. So if you have like a shirt that looks almost right, but you need to like make it a crop top. Well, there it goes. It's not your shirt anymore. I mean, you could wear it outside, I guess, but it's not what you used to have. It's really what are you willing to sacrifice, or like what do you already have that is close enough to the items, or you can borrow items from people too. So this is kind of an extreme example, but this is my top, my first iteration. I'm on iteration four now of my taco cosplay from the Adventure Zone, and um, everything I already owned. I had that wig from a different cosplay, all the clothes are my clothes from like, I also have a clothes hoarding clothes problem though, so like, you might not be able to like, go full out and just already own it, like, all this kind of stuff, but there, it works also for like, really simple costumes, um, for more simple characters. So, the next thing is using your leftovers. So, um, I, I don't really have one right now, but I used to have just lists of all of the fabric I had, what kind it was, what color it was, how much of it was. Um, you're really going to want to know, especially when you're going to the store, like what you already have and what you need to get. Um, and you definitely want to do it before you go shopping so you know what, so you can reuse things you've already had and you might be able to make some compromises there and use things that you've used in past cosplays. Um, Always check, especially if you're like a little further into your cosplay career, always check what you have because there will be things that you've forgotten. I have like a whole bucket of white fabric, so there's things you've forgotten. There's also, uh, you can check what other people have, so I'm sure um, a lot of the members of the club have a lot of stuff that they don't need. You can ask, go on their Facebook group, ask what people have. I'm sure they'll be willing to either give it to you or give it to you for a deal. Um, you want to check your wigs, like if there's any wigs you have for an old cosplay that you're willing to like sacrifice, like cut up or restyle. Um, any shoes that you already have that you're willing to wear for the costume. Just like before you go and buy a whole new like everything, like don't end up with four spools of white thread. Don't keep buying white thread if you already have white thread. Um, but also don't assume that you have black thread because then you'll get home and you won't have any. Um, <coughs> anyways, um, this eliminates like you buying more stuff than you already have. And then also when you buy things like thread and buttons, well, okay, I mean, you will have extra buttons and like snaps, interfacing, things like that, you're going to have leftovers most likely. So 
it's good to know that you have them so you don't end up overbuying them again. Um, and then the last point is that you should buy more than what you think you'll need, which is kind of contrary to saving money, but also um, you don't want to be making your costume and then run out of fabric. That's like a nightmare because then you have to go back and spend the time to go back, buy more. You might not have the good coupon anymore. Um, so you always want to make sure that you're going to have enough. But don't ask me because I will overestimate by like two yards. So um, I can attest to that. That's me. <laughs> you can attest to that. Yeah. Um, but you don't want to run. So the next thing is, um, these aren't. The next thing is thrifting. Um, so this is for things that can be readily found, like things that exist in the real world. So suits, school uniforms, dresses, um, a lot of accessories you can find at thrift stores. You can find things to modify too. So this is our member Curtis. He is a thrifting god. Um, and he pretty much completely thrifted these outfits. He like added the symbol on the, the, the Jack on the left, I think he bought the bow tie at Red Stock. But other than that, like everything is completely thrifted. Um, <coughs> and also, and I can attest to this, um, the thrifting is great for mock-ups. So if you need to make a mock-up and you don't want to go to Joanne's, because I don't something like that, you can go to a uh, thrift store and buy fabrics. The, the, um, you can buy sheets. I buy a lot of sheets um, at, <laughs> at the store. and. Those are good for making mock-ups. You also might be able to find fabric and sheets that would be good for your actual costume, um, which doesn't happen as often. But like, if you need like a really thin white fabric, you can go to the, go to the Goodwill, go to Goodwill and find it pretty easily. Um, and you never know what you're gonna find, so go to the crafting session section. They sometimes have stuffing, which is always good to have on hand, or just ask me. I'm so interested. So, um, more thrifting. So you're going to want to know what you want before you go in so you don't get lost in Goodwill or the Dig and Save, which I'll talk about later if you don't know what the Dig and Save is. Um, because you can spend hours in thrift stores, at least I can spend hours in thrift stores, and you might end up getting overwhelmed and not remember what, or getting distracted and not remember what you were looking for. So definitely know what you're looking for. Bring references and images. This goes for any time you're shopping for cosplay, though. Always have an image of what you're trying to make with you. Um, and also look for items that are like close enough, because you might not always find what you're looking for. So we have the, uh, the example of Yuri from Yuri and Ice up here. And the bottom, if, you, if I saw that in a thrift store and I was trying to cosplay Yuri, I'd probably cry, because it's perfect. Um, the top is pretty close, but like it, you might want to add some black fabric if you want to under the arms to make it a little closer. And otherwise, it could pass pretty easily and no one would question it. And then the top is what you're most likely to find, um, which is it's close enough, but it's going to take a lot of altering. But like altering is still cheaper probably than making it from scratch. Um, and you also might have to combine two items if you find like this is the exact top of the dress I need, but I need this kind of skirt, and these are like what I need. You can always rip them apart and put them back, put them together. Frankensteining items. Um, you can, you know, add more fabric to things. You can make things shorter. Uh, I have endless examples. If anyone ever needs any, but I don't think you need me to go off for ten minutes on altering those sort of things. <laughs> And then also just think outside the box. I'll have an example later of thinking outside the box. But for right now, just know that, you know, uh, you might not find exactly what you want, but you might find a really beautiful prom dress or wedding dress for like $10 that has a lot of pretty beads and you want to make something beaded. So you can, you can steal beads, you can steal buttons. Don't literally steal them. Buy the item and then, when I say steal, I mean like rip them off or <laughs> take them off. Um, you can take zippers. Um, and this is especially good if you like buy something and you want the fabric from it. Like I bought a sweatshirt to make a hat and I just wanted the fabric but it had a zipper. So I was like, well now I have a huge red zipper. Um, just, uh, you know how like in the past when we would go hunting and we'd use all the parts of the animal? It's like that with clothing. <laughs> um, use everything you find. Don't, don't become a cosplay hoarder though. Like no one you should throw things away. Don't keep little squares of fabric, Jessica, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thrifting resources, so you a lot of, yeah, you guys are lucky, Madison is a thrifting paradise, um, 
We have a couple Goodwills. We have a couple St. Vincent de Paul. De Pauls. We have a few rethreads. One of them is on State Street. Notice how I skipped the dig and say. We'll get back to that. We have Reg stuff, which is like high end thrifting. Same with rethread. So like those are they're I mean they're a little more pricey options, but um, if if it's there, it's really close. I mean it's a couple blocks away. So um, if it's there, it's there. Um, and Rake Stuff also has, I sometimes like, they change what they have in their goods section like every other week, but they also have petticoats sometimes, which is really nice um, if you need those. And they also, um, there's a Grace Thrift store on Junction Road, which has Thrifty Thursdays. Thrifty, Thrifty, Thrifty. Um, and a Boomerang's resale shop on North Sherman Avenue. And like, if you Google it, it will, like Google Thrift Store in Madison, and, they will pop up all over the place. And then the last one that I skipped is the Dig and Save on Park Street, which is like maybe two miles that way. I don't know which way that way. Um, and they have half price on Wednesdays, which is crazy because if you don't know what the Dig and Save is, it's a pound for clothing. So you go there, it's the pictures up in the corner, it's all these bins full of clothing. You dig and you save. And they weigh the clothing at the end. What? The dollar. A dollar per pound of clothing. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jessica. And so on a half price Wednesday, it's 50 cents per pound of clothing. I can do math. Which, um, the Dig and Save isn't a place where you go knowing what you want. I mean, you should try and like look for certain things, but it's kind of a place where you just happen upon items. It's a place, it's like, it's just like the, the wild west of thrifty. You never know what you're going to find. I should have worn some dig and save stuff today because the it's the shark shirt. My aerial dress. <laughs> You'll never know what you're going to find. It's a good place, especially if you're looking for, like, I need just this color fabric, or I need buttons, or I need a zipper. You can go to the dig and save and find it. Or if you just want a whole new wardrobe for, like, $6. <laughs> Actually, I think I, I think I got this jacket out of the dig and save. So, you know, you can get that kind of stuff. <laughs> And yeah, so I'll go to the Dig and Save. They also have a bunch of other stuff too, the, um, like movies and also if you don't know what the Dig and Save is, it's basically where clothes go to die. So all the clothes that don't get sold at St. Vinny's um, after a certain amount of time will end up at the Dig and Save. Um, so it is a mixture of mostly weird, bad clothing and then some really good rare finds. Okay, and then also we have the dollar store. <coughs> so the dollar store has all of your craft item, item needs for a dollar. And um, this includes sandpaper, you can get super glue there, you can get foam there, poster board, um, toys and props, you can get beads, feathers, hot glue gum sticks, you can get glue, packing supplies, etc. So you can get makeup, <coughs> wouldn't suggest it, but if you're on a budget, you can get makeup at the dollar store. Um, you can get hair pieces, like fake flowers, you can get so much there. Um, like, I'm not saying every cosplay should start with a trip to the dollar store, but definitely if you haven't been to the dollar store in like the last year or the last month and you don't remember what they all have, just go there. You'll be amazed at all the stuff they have there. They have whole crafting sessions. Like, you don't know what's at the dollar store until you go to the dollar store. Um, and it's worth your time because it's a dollar. Um, just don't bring like, just don't end up buying 15 other things like I usually do. Um, I will like say watch for quality because quality, everything is imported and like it's made very cheap. In, in order to be sold for very cheap, how is it made? Um, so some things are probably going to break if you buy like toys. So we have the example of um, one of our past members. Um, wanted to make Jews Will from Tokyo Ghoul, who I also want to make sometime. Um, and he got a lot of knives um, in his shirt, as you can see. Um, and they actually found like these little like play knives that like, like the ones that go in when you try to stab someone um, at the dollar store. And she just bought like 20 or 30 of them and lined her shirt with them. And she had all the knives. Um, they all pretty much ended up breaking by the end of the day. Of the day but like she had them. <laughs> Um, there are some things to avoid though, like tools, I, I mean you can try, but I mean it's a dollar, you could try, but I wouldn't go for it. Makeup, 
I mean, I have some dollars for makeup. It depends on what you get. It's not the best. I bought eyeshadow from the dollar store. It doesn't really work. But you can get like nail polish, you can get lipstick, um, you can get pretty much anything the dollar store has. I can't stress that enough. Um, yeah. And then if you want things to last, uh, like, and you're gonna like just buy a straight up prop from the dollar store, then maybe don't buy it from the dollar store though. <laughs> like the knives. So it's all, it's a dollar. <laughs> it wasn't me, Maddie, but then I I, I, I'm cringing on the inside that I just had to do that. Anyways, um, there's also a lot of secondhand like groups, or like we, you could you know, put it on our Facebook group. Um, so if you want to find you know, wigs or costumes or like unused fabric, you can go to there's so many groups on Facebook. Um, there is cosplay.com, which I don't know if people still use, but like I used it in high school. I don't know if people still use it though, but they have a section for, um, they have like a forum and they have a section for sales. Um, you could try eBay, it's up to you. There's Craigslist. Um, there are swap meets, which has a winky face, but we used to do them. We haven't recently because they never really turned out well. But um, there are some conventions. They will have like actual like swap meets or like trading posts for cosplay or just like general nerdy stuff. So if you ever see one of those, I did one once. It was so fun. I made like a hundred dollars. It was great. Um, so I would suggest that. Um, yeah, it's like thrifting, but not because you're helping out your fellow cosplayer get rid of stuff they don't need, and they're probably giving it for you for a good deal because they don't want it anymore. Um, also, our club, we're compiling the list that's getting there. We got a lot of donations this summer. Um, so eventually, once we go through all that stuff, we're going to probably put the list up for people to you peruse, and if you need anything from it, you want anything, we'll probably, we can offer it to you. It, we probably, there'll probably be a price for it, but it'll be like super cheap. Um, but, yeah, so just make sure you're careful, don't be afraid to ask questions or ask for pictures or ask other people who have bought from them because there are people out there who take advantage of others and if it ever happens to you, I will pump them down for you. Um, just trust your gut, if you're, everything ever seems shady, you can ask one of us or ask Lily anyone and they'll probably be able to give you an honest opinion and if it seems like super shady, just like, you don't have to go through with the transaction. Um, if you're going online, you can use PayPal because, um, and, and if you use PayPal, do not pay with friends and family option. This is very important. Do not pay with friends and family option. You pay with the goods and service option, even if they ask you to, um, because that way, if they don't give you your item, then you can get your money back. It might be annoying to get the money back. It might be a process, but you can get it back. If it, the friends and family, family option is basically like if you wanted to send your grandma twenty dollars, and like your grandma's not going to ask for the money back, so they don't have that. Up. Um, it's not it's not seen as a business transaction. So Joanne Fabrics, where most of us will probably be buying our cosplay supplies from, um, if you have to make any sort of cosplay that requires any amount of like extra work. Um, so they have lots of lists. Um, they have snail mail, they have emails, they have texts, they have website, and they have a mobile app. And um, what's nice about all these, and you might be like, well, I only need one. No, get them all. Get them all if you can. Um, because a lot of the time, and by that I mean like 90% of the time, all of the coupons are going to be different. They might say they're all 30% off, but um, as you can see here on the side, there's this little... <coughs> There's this little number right here, and as long as the number is different for each coupon, you can use them all. Unless it like specifically says cannot be combined with other coupons, um, you can use all the ones that have different numbers, which is usually like every coupon that's like 20% off or 30% off one item is different. Um, and that means like, so like the one you would get on the email will be different from the one that you'll get on the text, from the one you'll get on the website, so you can just get so many coupons. Um, I'll go to, every time you go to Joanne's, you should have at least like three or four coupons, if not more. <laughs> um, Joanne's does accept competitor coupons, um, and you can only use one at a time, so like if Hobby Lobby has a better deal, they're usually the same, but like if it does have the better deal, you could bring that in. I've never done it, but, um, 
And yeah, as I said, Joann's accepts more than one of their coupons as long as they have different like numbers um, there. There is a if I don't think any of us are teachers, but if anyone is a teacher, you can get 50% off your total purchase. There used to be a student discount, but people were apparently abusing it. I don't know what that means, but they were abusing it, so they got rid of it. It was 10% off, which is kind of sad. Um, but maybe they'll bring that back, so we'll look for that in the future. And then, yeah, watch for sale dates. Usually Sunday and Saturday are their big sale days. Um, and there are sometimes there are coupons that are Thursday to Saturday only. When you're looking at your coupons, definitely look at what day they are. It will be at the top. It will say when they're valid um, and where they're valid, so it might not be valid in store or it might only be not be valid online. Um, and then, like what day? And then, yeah. <coughs> Always read the fine print too. So, um, a lot of coupons, if it's like one item it'll be only regular priced items but then a lot of the 20 like your full purchase ones will include all items including sale items but those are the ones you're going for um but also like the total purchases ones usually are like the only you can use oh no actually here it says limited one total purchase discount per transaction so if you had 30 percent off a regular price item you could use that too which would be really nice and you'd get just a lot off so Always read the fine print. It takes like five seconds. You learn how to read them pretty quickly. It tells you what you can't buy, which is either like sewing machines or printers or desks. Um, but yeah. So also at Joann's, they have this thing called the end of the bolt. So if you're buying fabric and it ends up like there's only one yard left in the bolt, they're gonna offer you the end of the bolt, which they'll offer you whatever's left at 50% off. Um, you. This is up to you if you want it. Um, you don't have to, but that's always a good option to like think about. Um, if you're really cunning, I've never done this, but it just occurred to me now. You could, if there, you know there's four yards on the bowl, you could ask for three and a half and get that last a half yard 50% off. But that's really mean. But you could do that. Um, um, otherwise, they will just cut that piece off if you don't want it, and they will use it for remnant fabric, which are usually small amounts of fabric, two yards or less. I've never seen one two yards. It's actually like one yard or less usually, but um, they'll be packaged in little like baskets around Joann's. I know the Joann's we usually go to has like six baskets drawn across the store, so you just want to find them all. Um, and these are great for like any small piece of the fabric you need, accessories, contrast. Or, you know, if you're like me and you just like pretty fabrics, um, they're really dangerous. And they're always 50% off. Like, they'll tell you how much of the fabric it is on it. They'll tell you what kind of fabric it is and how much it costs normally. And then you can take 50% off the cost of whatever it says on there. Um, there's also red and orange take fabric. And I think they have other colors too. I've only like seen red. I think there's green. Um, they're like remnants, but they're in a lot larger quantities. They have like a whole row at like, the end of the fabric section in Joann's. And there's a lot of weird stuff in this section. Like if you ever like have extra time, just go to the red orange take fabric because there's a lot of weird things there. Just like the weirdest stuff. Like why does this exist? Where was this? Um, and they're often really like heavily discounted and they usually go on sale for another 50% off um, and you might find what you need there. I wouldn't bank on it, but um, you, I mean, if you're like just trying to make like a casual dress or like something just for funsies, you might be able to find something really cheap and really cool there, but it's a lot of weird stuff. There's also a lot of like outdoor fabric over there too, so like really thick fabric, so if you need something like that. Um, patterns. We've gone through this in Patterns 101, but we'll go through it again to drive it into everyone's head. They're, they cost a lot of money. Um, go wait till they go on sale. Thank you for coming. Um, they go on sale about once every two weeks. Each brand goes on sale at around a different time. So they'll be like $5 or $1 each or something like that. Just wait for them to go on sale. Don't buy it at the full price. Um, also, if you really like know you need a specific pattern, you could open form and announce it. Now to ask someone if they have it, because I have so many patterns and I am more than willing to probably give out some of them. So if you're like, I need a kimono pattern, I have to. Um, I wouldn't suggest it though. Um, and then always check the clearance sections, especially at Joe Ann's. Um, they have a huge clearance section in the back. 
sometimes the clearance stuff doesn't really seem like it's on clearance though because it's not actually that cheap but sometimes you'll find some really cheap stuff back there especially like paint they have paint brushes back there often um beads are back there a lot too so that's so wigs are a topic you get what you pay for you can get a five dollar wig on ebay but it's probably not going to be as good as a 30 dollar wig on arda um There are some, I mean, I talked about this in the Wix workshop, so I won't go on another big rant about it, but there are some good, like, cheap options on Amazon, so if you ever need help with getting a cheap wig off of Amazon that is decent quality, you can ask me. Um, you also can find a lot of pretty good quality, like, pre-styled wigs on Amazon or on, like, like um, AliExpress. They'll usually be about $20, so you might get a cheaper option there. Um, that's if you're, like, looking for a character that has, like, an iconic look. Like, Style though. So like I bought my Billy wig from Vocaloid, or I bought, I'm gonna buy a Monica wig from Doki Doki Literature Club off of Amazon. And I trust that it's gonna be good quality because it's made for that character and it has good reviews. Just um, Ari does do flash sales. You can sign up for their newsletter, letter, or follow them on Facebook. Um, Maddie usually posts when they're having a flash sale on the group. Um, they should be doing one soon. I know they did one for back to school, and they usually do one around Halloween, but they also get really swamped at Halloween, so they might not be doing it this year. Um, they also have um, sales, like they have a clearance section for their discontinued styles or colors, um, which are like very specific things, but if they have what you need, they have what you need. Um, and then also check the reward pro um, program. So a lot of the big sites do do like points and like extra like reward program where you can get like five dollars off or whatever. And yeah, and Amazon, eBay, check the reviews, and um, know that sometimes if it's gonna be shipped to you, it's not Amazon Prime. It could take upwards to a month. I've waited on wigs for like a month and a half before. Um, and then what to avoid? So for fabric that you're gonna want to avoid, it's gonna be cheap, but you're not gonna want to do it. And broad cloth, you can use it. I've used it, but it's not the nicest feeling fabric. You're going to want to avoid costume grade satin, like that's like the kind of satin you would use to make like if you were making your little sister a dress or something. Like it's really cheap, but it's really, really shiny. Again, if that's the look you're going for, go for it. But um, yeah, you're going to um, want to avoid the like really cheap crushed velvet. So it's like the velvet, but it looks crushed. Um, and again, these might work, but it's only if that's exactly what you're going for. Otherwise, I'd say avoid them. Um, thank you for your time and your candy. Um, also for wigs, um, if you're going to be like spending a lot of time styling a wig, it's probably better to just buy one that already is going to be really thick so that you know you'll get the style and you won't have to buy extra webs for. And same with um, lighter colors, when you're buying them on like Amazon, they might be easier to see through. Um, I didn't make the wig section, guys, because I really like it. Um, and then, yeah, please don't make things about out of cardboard. I mean, you can, but um, unless that's like the look you're going for. I know some people like to make like the samurai outfits out of cardboard because it's just like... It's Mimi. It's Mimi. <laughs> but, um, or I've seen people make the samurai outfits out of like boxes of beer, like that used to have beer in them. Beer samurai. Um, or like Mountain Dew boxes. So you can do that, but um, I wouldn't suggest it. So we're going to go through a few of my costumes that I've made and um, just see how much they cost so you can, guys can get an idea as to like, what certain things might cost you. Um, and some of these prices are pretty heavily estimated, but like they're all ballparked around what they would have cost. They probably cost me like it. So this is Taco again. He's back. Um, and actually, it was actually a lie because I, remember, I realized I did buy one thing for this. Um, so. As I was putting this together, I realized that I literally did just make, no, buy everything. The, the hat was like crafted, but I already owned everything that I made it out of. Like everything was free because I already owned it. Like I bought it at one point, but I already owned it. And um, I did buy elf ears. They're not in this picture because they didn't come in time. But so I guess that puts the total um, at $6. But yeah, this is the dream scenario. If your costume can cost you no money, <laughs> but that's not gonna happen. So let's do one that actually cost me some money. So this is my Eureka Steins gate. You know, I can a kind of fuzzy photo because there's four three people in this photo. I had to crop out just because it was too big. Um, um, 
And so the dress I bought from Ho I bought the fabric from Hobby Lobby because that's the only store my mom would go to when I wanted to make it four days before the convention. Um, and I got 50% off coupons, so the fabric only cost me $10. Um, I ended up re I had this was the second time I made this costume, so I ended up reusing the um, like pink frilly lace I had, and then I had lots of leftover um, ribbon that I already had. Um, and same with the hat, the ribbons were left over, I, or, I, or I ripped them off the old hat. Um, I already owned the shorts even when I made it originally. Um, I bought the both boots, which you can't see, from Goodwill for $4, and then the wig I actually bought for $20, which is um, from a convention because I, did, I didn't have a wig when I went to the convention with it. But um, I probably could have bought a cheaper one, but it's a wig, it's a good short black wig, which works pretty well for a lot of costumes, so I just splurged on it. So that puts the total costume at $34, and I think the original cost like $50, because we use satin for some reason. <laughs> um, so, moving up in the world a little bit, so this is my Gumi cosplay. So the ears were a leftover fabric from a friend, she let me use it, and the same friend made the tail for me for my birthday out of yarn. So, you know, if you have friends who are really crafty and good at things that you're not good at, that's a good way to get some things. It's like, it's my birthday, can you just make this one? <laughs> um, the, Amazon, the wig I actually bought off of Amazon, it was about $16, and it had prime, and I had prime, so that was good. Um, and it came pre-styled, I just had to like fix up the bangs, which you can't really see in this photo, because I gave up with them. Um, and then the vest was like the only thing that I had to like make from scratch, which was some blue fabric, some buttons, a chain that I already owned, a spool of ribbon, and a zipper that I didn't even use. <laughs> so that kind of added up. The socks I bought from Amazon, the shoes I already owned from like doing musicals in high school, the dress I had already owned that someone bought for me, and I just bought some like the cheapest orange ribbon I could find, and then the collar and the bell I bought off of Amazon each and put them together. And so in the end, the whole thing ended up being about $64, which is pretty good, I'd say. That's about an average cosplay, I'd say, for me. Um, and then moving on to one more, a little more expensive, excuse my like red face, um, this is way I made this costume back in high school, so, um, and it's probably one of the most expensive costumes I made, besides maybe like Anna. So I had to get a lot, I didn't have to get that much fabric for the dress, but I did get about four yards um, to uh, white satin for just everything, um, but at 50% off, so it was only like $20. Um, I got the wig off of Amazon, again it was like pre-styled, but it was for a different character, but it didn't really matter, it was the right color. Um, so that was about $20, I got a feather boa for around the hair. Um, the egg, so the egg I ended up, I was going to like paper mache it, but I was trying to figure out what I was doing. I was sitting next to on my computer staring at a picture and there was a bottle of Mountain Dew right next to me and I was like, the top of this Mountain Dew bottle looks exactly like the egg that I can make. So I literally just caught the Mountain Dew bottle. So, you know, use your resources. You never know what's gonna be useful. Don't start hoarding Mountain Dew bottles, please. But like, you never know, like just look for shapes. Um, the necklace was just a bunch of extra supplies I had and then I had to actually buy like the, the change thing. So that was $5. The ballet shoes were old ballet shoes I actually had that I then made unfunctionable by covering them in ribbon, um, which was some money. I made some wings that you can't really see. The tutu was like 12 yards of tulle around a ribbon, so that was like $24. <laughs> um, the blue things were just some wire and some cotton, and then we had like a lot of notions, so like two spools of thread, grommets, the grommet tool, which was like $25, which is where it's like if you I wanted to make the corset as good as I could, so I was like, I'm going to put the grommets in, um, which if you don't know are like the little metal circles that you lace lace through. Um, but in order to do that, I needed the like hole puncher thing that you use for it, which was a decent amount of money. And boning also is expensive, so I luckily got that 30% off, but um, it still wasn't cheap. <laughs> I bought the bracelets, I threw it to the bracelets and painted them, and then I did end up buying, you can't really see them, but I bought feather eyelashes at a Halloween store for like $12, and it was worth every penny. Um, and that means the total was about $174, and me crying, um, but it was a dream. <laughs> and now the costume is ruined, no, it's old. But, um, yeah, so in conclusion, um, 
that was not a budget cosplay. Just that was me just being. I want to do this. So um, you really decide like what your budget's going to be. It's up to you if you want to save as much money as possible. You have. You now have all of the abilities to do as save as much as you can. Um, it can take a long time, and it might be a little frustrating to have to wait to work on things. But like in the end, you save money and you made your cast. That's all I can do. Yeah, that's all I got. Thanks. Now, are there any questions, comments, queries? No.